if we truly read the question first, here's what we read. We read how many units fit in each box. Okay, everybody, simple English math talk. I know those two, those two things don't really go hand in hand, but let's try that out. Let's, let's talk about this in, in as simplest terms as we can. Let me go ahead and point this out here. How many units fit in each box? Everybody, quick question. If I'm asking, hey, how many of these fit into that? What math idea is that? What math idea is that? If I'm saying, hey, how many of these fit into that? Not subtraction, not subtracting. Subtraction would be how many, how much do you have left? If I take this away, how much is left? That's subtraction. This is not subtraction. When, I, when you're trying to see how many of these can fit into that, how many of these can fit into that, that is division. That is division. Let's pause really quick because my question is, regardless of whether you think this question is easy or hard, are you prepared to answer more like this? Do you understand everything you need to know leading up to this, like fractions, decimals? All of these questions that I'm asking you are legitimate questions that every successful ASVAB test taker needs to ask themselves. And so tracking your progress, guaranteeing that you know you're ready, that's the number one way to prepare. And that's why we designed our progress dashboards for the math basics, arithmetic reasoning, and math knowledge. No more do you have to guess and hope for the best in terms of, hey, I practiced for two days straight, I hope I'm ready. You know, that happens way too often and then people move on only to find out that they weren't ready and then time was wasted. So don't waste time. When you have a plan and a progress book like this that's lined up for you from beginning to end, you are absolutely 100% guaranteed to grow. So if you're happy about that or excited, go ahead and click the link in the description of this video or text me at 567-698-8867. Text me asking me about how the program works. I'm more than happy to take time out of my day to make sure that you're successful. So don't waste time. Let's make sure you get the score you want and that job you deserve. Hit me up, click the link in the description, and let's get you in there. Division is basically saying how many groups fit into the larger number. That's what that means. Well, it's not always going to be a larger number because you can divide by small numbers, but typically division is this. You're trying to make how, how you're trying to figure out how many groups of this number make up this number. That's division. Everybody does that make a little more sense to you. The volume is part of this problem. Don't worry, volume is part of the problem. But do you understand that in principle, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're dividing the small box into the big box to see how many of those small boxes fit into that bigger box. Yeah, no worries. I know you're seeing prism and that's the problem, everybody. Too often we tend to rely on some false sense of instinct sometimes because we just see a trigger word and we assume that that's the whole problem. A trigger word is basically telling you what's going on in this part. But when that trigger word is in the question sentence, that reveals a lot. That reveals a lot. So t right here, it says, hey, how many units fit in each box? You are dividing. You are dividing. And you're going to say, basically, your big box divided by the small box. Because if we read the actual information, I'm just going to go through it once in English. I'm just going to go through it. Read it like this. Hey, George ships merchandise and sends boxes of product to a distribution center. Each box is in the shape of a rectangular prism and measures this by that by that. And then each unit of product is a two foot cube. Okay. So yes, we have a rectangular prism, but notice what they give you. The dimensions. That first huge box, four by 12 by 20, length with height 20, or four by 12 by 20. The smaller one is a two foot cube. So if you didn't know, a cube is like a square. A square has all the same sides. A cube has all the same dimensions. Length, width, and height are all gonna be two. So notice how in theory, guys, we could find the volume of the big box. We can find the volume of the small cube. And when we divide the volume, the total space of that big box by the space of these products, 
we're gonna see how many products we can fit. Does that make any sense at all there? If we take the volume of the big box and divide it by the volume of each little box, we will find out how many boxes fit. Because that's, that's the true idea here. Notice that we're not talking about the calculations. I'm not going for, what's four times 12? No, man, all I'm doing here is trying to tell a story. How can we get to the answer? If we're trying to see how much of one thing can fit into another thing, that's division. And so what is it that we're gonna be dividing? Well, they tell us the dimensions. That means, hey, volume, space, how much we have of the big box, how much we have for each little box. If we divide, we'll get the number, the number of product that we can fit. Perfect. So I'm, I'm glad that you guys are saying that you're, you're, it's clicking for you because notice we didn't go through the math yet. We go through the story. Exactly, TR. So here we go. Everyone, that big box, let's take a look at the volume of the big box. So let's go ahead and show the volume here. Everyone, for a rectangular prism, what's the volume of a rectangular prism going to be again? Can you give me the formula for it? Volume equals what? That's right, Stephanie. Length times width times height. So if we go for that here, check it out. We got 4 by 12 by 20. So we'll go ahead and do that here. We got 4 times 12 times 20. Then for the small box, everybody, what are the dimensions of the small box? What's the length? What's the width? What's the height of a two foot cube? So Olivia, yeah, it's gonna be all twos there. It's all gonna be two. And let me go ahead and just draw this for you so you can see a little more about where I'm coming from. So here I'm gonna draw the prism. Let me just go ahead and draw this for you guys. Let me just get another try there for some reason. There we go. Perfect drawing and then bam. Let me just show you what each of these are gonna look like. I wish I had a short code to just say, hey, give me a rectangular prism for this app. I'm gonna figure that out. So with that, it's a four by 12 by 20. So this is not gonna be drawn to scale, but this will be four by 12 by 20. And so that would be, again, the length, width, and height, and you would multiply those. Now, when you have a cube, let me go ahead and draw this here. And go ahead and draw this. So your cube, which is not gonna supposed to look like that, right there, just like that. Boom. Of course, I love going the extra mile for you guys. And so boom, right there, there's your cube, there's your cube, bam. So there's your cube. Now, when you say that you have a two foot cube, that means that this is gonna be two, this is gonna be two, and that's gonna be two. Remember everybody, when you talk about a square compared to a rectangle, a square is a rectangle. It just has all the same sides. So a cube is a prism. It just has all the same sides. Yes or no, does that make sense? He can't miss. Guys, it's in black and white. Come on. If I was just he was, if I was using colors and stuff like that, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll be goaded. But there it is. We have the two by two by two for the small box. And that's it, everybody. That's it right there. There's the volume of the big box, the volume of the small box. All that's left for you to do, find the volume, find the volume, divide and you're done. Are you guys ready for us to do the math? And no worries, Krishan, I saw that. Krishan, all you need to be aware of or be made privy to is that this problem is about dividing the volume of the big box by the small box. That's it. That's all that means. And we just use the formula, the length times width times height for each one. That's all we did. So let's go ahead and figure this out, man. Here we go. Four times 12, that's gonna be 48. 48 times 20, that'll be 960. So if we do the math there, and we do, again, four times 12 times 20, that's gonna be 960. Zakwe, I got you, I got you. And then everybody, two times two times two is gonna be what? That's gonna be eight. 
And so here we're just doing 960 divided by 8. And so if we know that 96 divided by 8 is 12, 960 divided by 8 is 120. So that's going to be 120 uh, products can fit in there. So 120 units of product. That's how many of these little boxes, that's how many of these can fit into here. That's how many can fit in. So this should be a lot smaller in that case, much smaller. And so that's a little more about what it would look like. That's how many can fit in when you stack them all up, do, 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 all the way up. That's how many would fit, about 120. Right, it could definitely feel like a twister in the beginning, but once you actually analyze those keywords, yeah, we could definitely point out what is actually going on. And so the way that we got 960 was we multiplied the four times 12 times 20, length times width times height. And if you're thinking that this was a surface area problem, Everybody, did they ask about the surface of these boxes? Or did they ask what can fit inside of the box? Yeah, that's, that's the main difference. That's the main difference. So when you're asking about how much can fit inside of another object, that's volume. You're talking about the space. But if you're talking about covering the space on the front end of it, or the bottom, or the top, or the back, or the side, that surface area. Let's keep it real, my math party people. I know that watching these ASVAB videos on YouTube is great, but what if you could join me live for a free class once a week? I do have free classes live once a week for two hours a piece for ASVAB math, so why not join me? Click the link right here, that way you can join me, raise your score for free, and keep kicking butt like you're doing right now. Let's get back to the action, but I hope to see you in class soon. Click there and let's get started. Keyword to know when to divide, fit. Yep, the word fit. So um, if you want to see me go ahead and do the, the division here for the 8 into 960, that would be like this. 8 goes into 9 one time. 16, 8 goes into 16 two times. That's a clean 16. And then you have 0 there, so that'll just be 0. So that's one way to do it. Now, next thing here that I want to show you before I move on is when you have this setup, so Zachway, props to you for pointing it out instantly. But I wanna go ahead and show you some pretty cool things that you can do to make your life a lot easier. So one thing that you can do is to simplify before you multiply when it comes to fractions. And here's what I mean. Everybody, is it true? Is it true that two times two is four? Okay, great. Now, everybody, is it also true, let me just move this over for a brief moment, take that out of the way. Everybody, is it also true that uh, when you divide the same thing by itself, like let's say four divided by four, that would just cancel out? Is that true? Oh yeah, that's right. So if you see what we can do with this opportunity, we can save a little bit of time. Instead of multiplying 4 by 12 by 20, or even if it was something trickier like 5 times 17 times 29, you would be getting a huge massive number, and then you would have to perform a potentially uncomfortable division. But if you understand fractions, you understand that you can simplify a fraction before you do anything to it, and you might see that, hey, if this is going to be 4, and that's 4 right there, that's going to cancel out. And on top of that, if you have yourself, let me just get rid of this now. If we have ourselves 20 and 2, well, 20 divided by 2, isn't that 10? So instead of doing 4 times 12 times 20 divided by 2 times 2 times 2, what this actually turns into, my party people, is 12 times 10. And that's 120, and you're done. And so you don't actually have to do those huge multiplications, if you understand that if you're dividing these two things, these two products, you can simplify first. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you wanna raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, 
but you're gonna get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.